Hello. So the first question is a big whack question. We are going to calculate cost of debt uh, after tax, cost of debt, cost of equity, the weights, and we will finally calculate the WEC together. So to calculate cost of debt, we are going to solve for Y10. And to get Y10 information, we are going to enter the face value. This is a semi-annual coupon bond. So we have 12 years to make sure to 12 times 24 years is our N. For the price, put a negative sign in front of the price or put a negative sign in front of the present value. We will enter this as our present value. We use coupon rate to find the face uh, payment. So we multiply this by the face value, 120, which is what we are being paid within a year in two payments. So each payment will be 60. And we have all the information here. Now enter the face, enter N, the price, and the payment. So for right M. So when you solve for the interest rate on your financial calculator, that interest rate will be 7.66%. And this is the period rate since everything we entered is based on semi-annual compounding. So we have two semi-annuals within a year. So YTM will be equal to 15.32%. So this is our cost of debt. And it is also called before tax cost of debt. Since debt has tax advantage, we can adjust for tax here, so 15.32% times 1 minus the tax rate, and the tax rate is given as 35% here. And this will be 9.9538%. So this is called after tax cost of that, the first one is called cost of debt or before cost of before tax cost of debt. And let's look at the cost of equity information. So for that part, we have the dividend growth model. We are going to solve for required to churn to get our cost of equity. So I need to know my dividend payment one. And the question says the company promises to pay $3. So this is my dividend payment one. Current stock price is 45 plus the growth rate. Now the growth rate in this problem is not given directly. Instead, we know dividend payment zero, dividend payment one. And we know dividend payments grow by the growth rate. So if dividend payment one is three, I'm going to enter my future value. And I'm going to enter this as my present value. Between this period zero and one, we have only one period. So my N will be one. So if I solve for the interest rate, that will be my growth rate. Or you can just use the formula. So future value equals present value times 1 plus the growth rate to the power 1. So if you solve for G here, you are going to get the growth rate as 8%. Now 3%. And I will add this here, so it is 3% or 0 0.03. And when you solve for this, oops,
the required return will be equal to 9.67%. Now we have our cost of equity, 9.67%, and finally we are going to calculate the weights. To be able to calculate the weight, we have to know how much we borrow from debt holders, how much we borrow from shareholders. So the price of the bond is 820. That information is written right here. And we have 61 bonds outstanding. So this means we raised $50,020 from bondholders. And the price of the stock is 45. And we have 1,111 shares outstanding. So we raised $49,995 from shareholders. The value of the firm is the sum of these two. 115 dollars and to find the weight of that i have this much that i raised from debt holders divided by the value of the firm and this will be almost equal to 50 percent And to calculate the rate of equity, you can do 49,995 divided by this total value, or you can just subtract this 50% from the whole, which is 100%. So this will have percent as well. And weighted average cost of capital is pretty easy to calculate now. So we have cost of debt, And the tax adjustment times weight of debt plus cost of equity times weight of equity. And when you solve for this, your final answer will be 9.81%. Now, let's look at the second problem. In this case, the debt to equity ratio is given and it is 45%. So I prefer writing this way. So it is 45%, 45 over 100, right? This means if you borrow $45 from debt holders, you're borrowing $100 from equity holders, so the value of the firm will be 45 plus 100, and the weight of equity will be 100 divided by 145. Weight of debt will be equal to 45 divided by 145. And these ratios will be equal to 68.97% and 31.03%. Now let's look at uh, the third problem. So we are going to calculate the standard deviation. And to calculate the standard deviation here, we are going to need expected return and then we will calculate the variance and the square root of variance will be the standard deviation so let's calculate the expected return first we have probability times the return plus 
probability of the second state times the return. And this is equal to negative 3.3%. And then using this, we are going to calculate our variance. So and variance will be equal to the probability of the state times the return minus negative 3.3% to negative signs comes together, it will be positive. And for the second one, I have 0 0.7 times negative 15% minus negative 3.3% to the second power. And when you solve for this, since I didn't adjust for the decimals here, I use the percentages, I am going to adjust that by dividing by 10,000. So this is 2. 23.587. This is 95.823. Divide this by 10,000. It will be equal to 0 0.03194. So when you take the square root of this number, it will be our standard deviation. And it is equal to 17.87. So now let's take a look at the next problem. So we are going to solve for portfolio beta. Treasury bill is a risk free asset, so the beta should be equal to zero. So let's go back to A. If it is as risky as the market, the beta of the market is equal to one. So the beta of A must be equal to 1. It is for equally weighted portfolio. So this is your portfolio. Since you have four assets which are equally weighted, each asset should carry 25% weight. And to calculate the portfolio beta, you will do weight of each asset times beta of each asset. Since the weights are the same, I can just use a common parenthesis. I will just write all the weights here and add them up. And this will be equal to 